it's interesting because um, Ophir, who talked before me, is actually my partner in Shift. We have a company together, and he didn't get to make it through his lecture, so I'm going to pick up where he left, uh, which is pretty cool. That's true. All right. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, context shift. What does this mean? Our lives exist within contexts. We all like, realize this to some extent, but we don't necessarily practice the art of changing them, just changing the context, because we are who we are. And we will keep being who we are, and we're going to develop and evolve, but the context changes if we want it to change. What is uh, a context? It's the interrelated conditions in which something exists or occurs, is the environment. And the shift is to change or to cause something to change uh, to a different opinion, belief, etc. So you're going to change what actually is your environment or your setting consciously. So I'm going to talk about superpowers really quickly because he talked about them already. I already uh, knew what I was like uh, planning to be when I grow up, when I was very young. I wanted to be a filmmaker, and I wanted to be a musician. So first came film. I was completely obsessed with film. Uh, my teachers would tell me to write about, uh, I don't know, something from the Bible for homework, and I would return with a screenplay for a short film <laughs> with uh, three biblical characters and like 10 that I invented, and they were having like crazy dialogues, <laughs> and I would get an A and like, oh, that, what the fuck? Um, and then later, when, when I kind of turned a bit older and I was a teenager and I started playing electric guitar and I wanted to be in a band, I basically just formed the band the first week and started playing guitar. And one year later, we were playing in front of 500 people. Um, we were playing metal music, it was very loud. Uh, I would write most of the music and lyrics and I would like jump into the drum kit and like I, all, all of this made sense, you know, when I was 16, like 400 people screaming back the lyrics I wrote when I was like angry in my room, it made perfect sense. That's, so that's, that's what I was doing until I got to the age where basically my career and my uh, self kind of, uh, the sense of self, my identity, were based around film and music. That's who I am. And my career kind of turned into basically first editing and then I edited like a film. So I started writing and then I wrote for shows and then I directed and then I directed something with a um, national lottery and I kind of realized that something's missing. Because I did all these things that I wanted to do, and it's not like I was walking on red carpets or earning a million dollars. I was just doing it, and it was good. And it basically allowed me to create film and music that I actually wanted to make, right? Because we all want to make, like most of us, I think, want to make our own thing. We don't really want to work on something that someone told us to do. Most things that we really enjoy are things that we thought of, we wanted to do. We woke up in the morning and we wanted to do them. And I realized that film and music are what I wanted to do when I wake up, but they're not my job. They're not my job. Um, and the main reason for this is that they don't really matter. The kind of jobs I was getting didn't matter for most people on Earth. They didn't care about writing a soap opera. Actually, it even sometimes made things worse. If you're really good at being a commercial director, you can direct commercials, then you can sell cars. If you're really good at writing shows, you can write primetime television shows, which are the epitome of quality and content. They're not. They're not what you really want to do. So what do you do? So basically, I had... Uh, a firmware upgrade. I had like a, a minor breakdown. <laughs> I was, uh, I've been traveling a lot at the same time because I was a freelancer so I could like travel. So I traveled uh, a year to India, a year and a bit, and a year and a half to the US and a year in Europe and I was traveling alone. I would come back uh, alone and I would leave alone and I would change and meet all these people and change the context. But then it would came back, I would come back home and work as a filmmaker and a musician. And I realized that what I really wanted to do was to use my superpower, which was creativity as I saw it. I would always bring this with me. But to make something which has to do with innovation, things that are actually, I don't know, new and different and meaningful. And for, for the thing itself to have a positive impact on the world, for people to actually be affected by what we're doing. Um, and the way I kind of uh, started working with my new context, because this is very abstract, this, is, this doesn't really mean anything. What I decided to do was I said, okay, who are the people who I should talk to? And I started talking to these people and kind of brainstorming who I was. And for the first time in my life, I didn't know who I wanted to be when I grew up. And I was kind of grown up. And, and I had this uh, moment of realization that this is my time to redefine my context. And the shift got a name, and the name was Shift. So I started this company with two friends. And the funny thing is, about a month and a half after this firmware upgrade slash breakdown, I had a company, a registered company. I've never done anything like this in my life. I never worked for a company, I think, as a, like, any more than a freelancer. But I had a company and I didn't know a lot about it, but I knew that I was good at being creative and that I'm going to do innovative and meaningful things because that's what I wanted to do. 
and my two friends went with me, and we just started having a lot of meetings, and then a lot of projects, and all of a sudden I was working uh, with robotics, and I was working with Arabs and Jews, creating a space lab in the north, and I was advising like this older people, experienced, intelligent people, and realizing that I have something to give, I have something to contribute uh, to most of these projects. I can look these people in the eyes, and I'll always have something to say. And then when it gets down to it, you can make videos. You can use what you do. And filmmaking kind of went back into this. It became a creative for innovation. And while doing this thing, I started attending hackathons. And everyone knows what a hackathon is? No. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> it's, a, it's an event It's like 24 or 48 hours long where a group of people create something, usually applications or something that has to do with technology. It usually has a theme like uh, world peace or technology like Google Glass. And so I started going to hackathons and really enjoying hackathons because I like to create them. And then something changed again. I got a new context from these hackathons because when I got to play around at hackathons, I was creating what I love to do, music. So I started creating music technology. The first one was actually in a Google Glass hackathon and was turning the Google Glass into like a looper with built-in effects controlled through your head. And it was really fun and it won the Google, Bla the Google Glass hackathon. And I was really happy about this. And I went into another hackathon where we were working at Shift uh, helping the hackathon happen, it was for special needs, and I was very touched by everything that was going on around me, until I met this professor. My partner introduced me to this professor who was using EEG headbands, and I told him, can I join? And he said, yes. And so I started playing, and next thing you know, this uh, amazingly inspiring paraplegic named Seth Yudi was playing music using the EEG without moving from his wheelchair, just making music from brainwaves. This won an award there, which got me to London where I came to talk about this, but the moment I finished talking about it, there was a hackathon there. And I was like, can I join? And they're like, yes, all right. So then I, I added a heartbeat sensor to the thing I did before. And then both the mind and the heart could play together and have some kind of dialogue. And then I showed that on stage. I did this with a guy I met there, this amazing French developer called Cyril. And we had this really good chemistry. We went on stage, we showed this prototype, and it won their award again. And I was like, all right, this is very good. This new context is working out very well. And the last time it happened, this weird picture here, I went to Paris, and I, this time I orchestrated everything. I said, I'm going to make a musical hat. And I went to a, a lab called IRCOM, it's in France, it's in Paris, and they have basically the world's most important center for music technology and sound um, research. And in, inside their crazy labs, there was a hackathon where I made a musical hat with Cyril, who came to meet me there especially, using my girlfriend's uh, custom designed hat that she made at home, which gave me the thought. And we put the EEG inside, and we put the same thing with the glass beads inside, moving your head, effects, looper, everything inside a hat, and it won an award. And so, what is the new context that was created for me? It was wearable technology, like Google Glass, and then I had special needs, which I would have never thought of myself, but now I devote a lot of time to, and, um, Hats. <laughs> and now these days, basically, this new context, shift and music technology are dictating my life. Um, so I got out the red card. I'm going to finish without really saying too much about this. I'm going to go straight to the question. And the question is, what is your context shift? What is your next context shift? Because basically, you have as many as you want. I know there's a lot of reasons why it's not that easy and why you have to kind of go through it. But when you end up on a stage like this talking about it, it's quite simple. I did it in like seven minutes or nine minutes. So the end of the road will be just a new context for you to express yourself and to live your life to a greater fulfillment. So good luck. I wish you all a great night. Thank you, Matan.